Good morning, I'm Canon Don Gurry of the Cathedral staff. We are now at the Cathedral of Christ the King in Kalamazoo, Michigan. This place is all about faith, faith in God and faith in mankind as God's creatures. Now we're standing up near the center doors at the south facade of the cathedral and I want to call attention to the brickwork. Uh, this uh, plain bond, ordinary way of laying brick, is uh, what we might expect in most buildings. Uh, the colors uh, are gorgeous. You see everything in red from an orangey to a purplish, royal purplish color. And uh, here we have an entirely different effect, uh, which makes a kinetic sculpture out of the walls between the tower structures. Now, this form of bricklaying is known to the trade as Flemish bond. And Flemish means weaving. And this manner of bricklaying is like weaving a tapestry. It's going to look very different on the inside because in these openings there are slabs of colored glass. Uh, which, of course, you cannot see in color from the outside. And now as we look at the beauty of the Cathedral Church of Christ the King, I might mention that this building on the outside looks very much like a fortress. And we are reminded that it, uh, a mighty fortress is our God. But the inside of the Cathedral Church of Christ the King is indeed a palace fit for the Prince of Peace. As we look around uh, this beautiful room, we see many features. People sometimes overlook the meaning of this place. The central object is the altar, which is the high altar of the Episcopal Church of Diocese of Western Michigan. We have some 55 parishes and missions. Uh, this is the hub. And so the altar is round like a wheel, and the aisles reaching out in all directions to the diocese and to the world about us are the spokes of the wheel. A cathedral, technically, is the place where the bishop of the diocese has his seat of authority. We're reminded that the chair where the bishop sits is the chief teaching position of the Episcopal Church in the Diocese of Western Michigan. The chief teacher is also the shepherd, the chief shepherd, and you see where the bishop sits, the pastoral staff or the shepherd's crook. That chair is known as the cathedra, C-A-T-H-E-D-R-A and the building that contains the bishop's cathedra or chair is the cathedral. Now cathedrals do not have to be very ancient or very magnificently large or uh, ornamented. Uh, this place fits our needs. I think the uh, architect, Irving W. Coburn, the architect of the University of Chicago at the time and now working in Massachusetts, is very fond of the pattern of the circle in the square. Symbolically reaching way back into ancient Greece and even earlier, uh, the uh, circle was a symbol of one God or oneness, the first cause. And the square was a philosophical symbol that uh, represents Aristotle's scientific philosophy of nature, earth, air, fire, and water. And that seems to underlie all of our uh, theology and uh, the uh, major religions of the world. Uh, the assumption is that there is the world of nature which God created and there is God himself who is the creator. 
and hence we have the circle in the square. Now, the canopy over this chair and altar is held up by four pillars. Uh, you see them uh, here uh, making a canopy over the altar. Now, behind uh, St. Matthew's column, uh, we have over here uh, St. Uh, Mary's altar. And uh, we can take a little closer look at that. Uh, above St. Mary's altar is the banner of the mother and child. And still above that, in the highest tower, are the bells, uh, which we saw just outside of the building. And it is those bells at the top of the tower, the peal of four great bells, uh, that uh, ring the Angelus at uh, 9 and 12 and 6 every day to remind us of those words of Matthew that begin his gospel, the words of the angel. Now we come here to St. Mark's column. And uh, St. Mark begins his gospel with the account of Jesus coming to the Jordan River at uh, the age of 30 to be baptized by his cousin, John the Baptist. And next to the uh, baptistry, the baptismal font, uh, we have the little chapel of uh, the Holy Spirit because it was at the baptism of uh, Jesus that the uh, Holy Spirit appeared in the form of a dove and uh, this little corner of the cathedral that has the baptismal font also serves as the place for our daily uh, service of Holy Communion. Now we turn over here to uh, St. Luke's column in the southwest corner of the building and uh, we're reminded that St. Luke was uh, not of the Jewish uh, lineage and faith. Uh, Luke was a Greek, and so his symbol is that of a bull, uh, because in the uh, Greek uh, religions, uh, the bull was the sacrificial animal. And uh, we're reminded also that Luke was a poet, uh, an artist, painter, a historian, and uh, a doctor of medicine. And now as we come over here to uh, St. John's column, uh, you might notice that uh, near the top of the column there is a spot of sunlight, which is interesting because that spot of sunlight comes from the sundial uh, opening here, the eye, the oculus of the building in the center of the square, and uh, is uh, at this time of day uh, getting along towards uh, noon uh, on the first row of chairs, the other side of the altar. Uh, but the symbolism there of John's column is that he was the writer of the last of the four Gospels, and uh, he ends his gospel by saying that the world itself could not contain all of the books that could be written about our Lord Jesus Christ. But we do have there, next to John's column, the complete Bible, Old and New Testament with the Apocrypha. And uh, John also says, shout out the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ our Lord. So it is appropriate uh, that the organ uh, be behind John's column. He said, uh, sound it out like an eagle. And we do trumpet it out and sing the gospel songs and the hymns of the Christian church to carry the message not only by word, but in the universal language of music. Now, coming back to the skylight, you see the circle 
in the center of the square, which uh, is the, the canopy on the four pillars, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. No time is the Holy Communion ever celebrated without reading the words of one of these four Gospels. And so, indeed, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John uh, are with us. And as the writer of the book of Revelation, uh, John the Divine, says, these four are full of eyes within and without. For they had seen Jesus and heard his words and inwardly meditated the good news of Christ in their hearts and gave it out to the world. Well, now we come to the baptismal font, which is a very important part of a Christian uh, church arrangement. And here again, we have the pattern of the cathedral itself in a rather smaller version. Uh, the uh, circle in the square, and it rests on a complete circle. And around this circle, at the time of a baptism, uh, stand the sponsors of the person to be baptized, along with family and friends, in uh, the first circle of fellowship as we welcome a new member of the body of Christ as a part of the kingdom of heaven. Uh, let us now go from this rather smaller circle of the individual, uh, the uh, physical, uh, now sanctified and made part of the body of Christ into the great uh, circle of the local congregation and uh, the ever-widening circles of the life of the newly baptized in uh, the universal Church of God throughout the world now, always and forever. Well, now in conclusion about the motif of this beautiful temple of God, the Cathedral Church of Christ the King, one thing to remember, the circle in the square stands for God in man's world. And John, looking at the chair that the bishop occupied on the north side of the table, was impressed to think in terms of the heavenly throne of God, the almighty creator, in a heavenly place filled with jewels, glorious, spectacular, in which Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John eternally look with the eyes that have beheld the things of Christ and have understood and have written. And as we worship here with our bishop, John the Divine thinks of that divine throne. And then he says there were 24 elders in the circle around the Lord's table. And in the midst of the circle, the Lamb of God bearing the marks of slaughter. And the 24 elders fell down to worship the Lamb.